I will go ahead and introduce Greg. Everybody knows Greg. He's on the board. He was our former well, sorry to say county commissioner, but I wouldn't. He really was that too. <laughs> yeah. 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 And um just you know, drive the gold, drive for it. consolidated, uh, you know, does so much for this county and for <laughs> this society. And um he's gonna I'm gonna let him introduce it, but he's going to talk about the Magic Lantern, which we have custody of as a historical right. society. So right. without further ado, Greg, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everybody being here tonight. Now, the reason or, or what prompted this talk is the fact that about a year ago, Jimmy Anderson donated a Magic Lantern to the Historical Society. And if you've been in the old jail museum recently, you've seen it on display. As a matter of fact, Manny, I think that's the next. Oh, I'm sorry. So this is the one that Jimmy donated to us. And to start with, I didn't know that much about magic lanterns. I thought, that's a slide projector, you know? And my thoughts went back to when I was a kid. And those of you that are as old as I am probably remember when you had to go visit your aunt and uncle and they whipped out the slide projector. And the next thing you know, you got two hours of here's Aunt Maud on the beach. Here's the picnic table where we ate, you know. And it just went on and on and you were bored to tears. Well, as I researched into this a little bit more, my attitude changed a little bit. Let's go to the next one, Manny. I want you to imagine, to set this up right, imagine it's now 1870 or 1880. You finished plowing all day, you went to the house, or maybe you finished clerking in the hardware store or something around town. And when you get home, what are you going to do for entertainment? No TV, no radio, no uh, Xbox, none of that. So, I mean, you can go to a picnic or a concert if it happens to be in town, or you could go to a corn shuck it if it's the right time of year. Or maybe attend a dance or big one, go to revival meetings if it's that time of summer. But most folks are probably going to read a little by the kerosene lamp and they're going to go to bed when the chickens roost. You know, there just wasn't a lot to do. Or let's go to the next one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the other alternative is we could go to a magic lantern show. A magic lantern show, imagine this, back in the days before any kind of mass media, this was the height of entertainment when you had somebody come to town with a new magic lantern show. Entertainment just to the extreme. All right, let's go to the next. Well, one of the first things I had to get around is why in the world do they call these things magic lanterns? That seems like an odd name. But you got to think back, these things were actually invented in the early 60s by a Dutch fella. Now, some of y'all can pronounce that name. I have too much south in the mouth to handle that. One. But the scientists invented this. Picture yourself back in the 1600s. You hadn't been exposed to much of anything in the way of any kind of technology. And if you went to an auditorium somewhere, a big building, and they were showing pictures with ghosts flying across the wall and angels flying and all these kinds of things, Naturally, they call it a magic lantern after attending one of those. So that's where the name came from. Let's go forward another. One. <laughs> oh, <boy>. Now, <laughs> so the early audiences were just enthralled by these images. You know, they'd never seen anything like that. Let's go to the next one. Now, in America, the first one actually was in 1793 in Massachusetts. But in only about 100 years from that first Magic Lantern show in America, there were 30 to 60,000 people earning a living traveling around being Magic Lantern show. Mm -hmm. So there was quite a demand for it. But they remained uh, popular from the 1700s. This, this is an error on this slide because it says, until the development of movie industry or radio led to the end of it. But actually, that's not true because we have Magic Lantern shows today, which is called Death by PowerPoint. <laughs> so All right. Now, when you look at the machines themselves, the actual Magic Lanterns, everybody and his brother was making them back in those days. There were literally hundreds of different manufacturers of Magic Lanterns. And uh, as time went on, 
the technology improved, they improved. It started out with maybe something with a candle for a light source. Then they went to a kerosene lamp. Then they went to acetylene. They went to limelight. Then they went to electricity finally before they phased out. So the lanterns kept getting bigger, better, stronger light sources. You know, it's like anything else, you know, you can drive a Volkswagen or you can drive a Rolls Royce. It just depends what you want to do. Now, here's a good example. Children, these were a popular Christmas gift for children back then. You could get a magic lantern designed for use by kids and they'd have storybooks and fairy tales and things like that in the slide sets they could use. So you can look at that, consider that an early version of a Viewmaster. Hmm. All right. Now, Magic Lanterns, as I said, they varied in price and features. And the uh, top end Magic Lanterns had elaborate lens systems, beautiful brass hardware on them. They had the uh, furniture grade cabinets. I mean, they're works of art. They're just absolutely beautiful. Or you go with the real expensive little tin ones that, uh, you know, like that child's version. So quite a variation. Let's go to the next. And you can see here the different kinds, you know. This is the, uh, the basic model about like we have. You insert the slides and they slip in behind that lens there. Of course, the professional showmen that were traveling is they... Gained a little money, got a little better income. They started upgrading. You could go to one with two lenses or even three lenses. And these things were advanced to the point where you could fade out from one image to the next, you know. Oh. Or you could show oh, photos yeah. in the series to make it seem like there was movement in it. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> now, the slides for these things were prepared on glass. They weren't on celluloid. And, you know, you can have black and white, full color. If you look at some of them in the display case in the old jail, some of them there are just absolutely beautiful color slides, you know, of flowers or people. And uh, as I say, you had to insert these from the side and slide it in. And most of them, the lens inverted the picture. So you had to put the slide in upside down for it to show right for the audience. And photographs could be reproduced, so you could have something in great detail that the audience hadn't seen. Now, they came out with special slides. You know, you could have multiple images, run them through real quickly, and it appeared they were moving. Some had cranks on them, like this kaleidoscope, uh, kaleidoscope slide. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if you turn that little crank, you get the kaleidoscope effect. Yeah. That was, ooh, wow, big time in the day, you know, for the 1870s or something. And long slides could be pushed in very slowly, and you'd get the view of a panorama of something, you know. Wow. So a uh, talented showman knew how to work these systems. Yep. Now, the subjects included about everything, religion, fraternal, sing-along slides, holiday subjects, We'll kind of go through some of the most popular ones. Let's go to the next one. Religious subjects for churches were probably some of the first and most popular for magic uh, lantern slideshows. Because you can imagine, you know, when not much is going on around, your church put an announcement out that uh, come Wednesday night, we're going to have the life of Christ on slides. And uh, we've got Professor... Joe Blow coming in to show you this, and he's been all over. Or maybe it's going to be a trip to the Holy Land. You know, only 10 cents a piece, you know, if you come in. And sometimes they would split that with a church and uh, give part of what they earned to the church, or sometimes they were sponsored by an organization. But religious subjects were really popular. Yeah. Political and patriotic ones as well. Spanish-American War, drumming up support for that. A political party or a particular political candidate. I understand Theodore Roosevelt used a lot of these, or his uh, campaign people did. So patriotic slides that were very popular. All right. Historical slides. Once again, let's put this in perspective. If you're thinking latter part of the 1800s, there are a lot of Civil War veterans alive. A lot of them, yeah. and they want to show the kids or their wife or somebody, you know, I was in that battle. 
You see that hill in the background? That's where we were, you know. They really enjoy going back and seeing those things, photographs of the battlefield, battlefield tours, that kind of thing. And historical topics uh, were very popular. For terminal organizations, you know, they have initiation things. They lended themselves, some of them, to uh, using slide sets. <clears throat> or maybe they had uh, information they had to give to new uh, uh, neophytes or whatever they call people being indoctrinated. <clears throat> okay. Think about scenic travel. In the days when you've probably never been any further than the Gainesville on the on a buggy, you know, if somebody could come in and show you the wonders of ancient Egypt or the redwoods in California, those things are big, you know. You've never seen anything like that. that would be amazing, you know. So just imagine the effect on people now. Now, on TV or through National Geographic or something, there's very little you can see that you don't go, oh, I've seen that or I've heard of that. But back in those days, just imagine what a treat it was to go and see some of these wonders. <laughs> is, okay. that, is that a three-dimensional slide? Uh, I mean, it's got uh, two images there. They they may have come out with some of those toward the end, but... You because know. you can see the Sphinx has got two faces. Yes. Right, so it's just... Mm. Well, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I think part of what you're seeing is the part of the headdress. No, 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 It's the, there's another oddball. I can... There's two, this, this, it's got like three eyeballs. All right, all right, right. All right, that's all right. It's all right. All right. Let's go on. Sorry. Too many questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a little bit about the projector, a little bit about the show topics. Let's talk about the shows themselves. You know, early shows are very basic. First guy comes out, you know, with his life of Christ and clicks through him, you know, and it's a pretty straightforward, basic show. But then they start getting competition. There's other traveling showmen. And this guy has a really good line of bull to go with his story. And they start developing the showmanship mm -hmm. aspect of this. And, you know, good showmen entertained uh, as well as informed. And they were really good at this. Some of them got their little game plan down good. The thing is, why do a great show here in Lumpkin County? And then that's the only place you get it. Yeah. No, you do a great show. Well, we did it at the uh, Baptist Church here. Let's go to the Methodist Church. Let's go to White County, to their churches. And the next thing you know, they show that thing all over the place before they have to develop another show. Well, another good advancement they made, some of them decided to include music. You know, not just the same guy talking. Hey, my wife is a great piano player. Why don't we have her play patriotic songs while I show them, you know, uh, Dewey and Manila or something, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe we could sing, you know, like a have a uh, slide with the words on it and like a primitive sing along with Mitch, you know? We could all start singing out in the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and some of my red even use sleight of hand. Now, I don't really know how that fit in. It's hard for me to envision how magic tricks and slide of hand will work into a slideshow, but apparently some of these guys were good enough to get it done. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they, as I mentioned earlier, some of these were sponsored. Some uh, charged 10 or 15 cents for a seat, and then they uh, gave a portion back to whoever the organization was hosting them uh, charged. And... Uh, you know, that gave them a real good image when they donated part of this to the church, you know. We came and did a tour of the Holy Land, and then we gave 50% to the church, you know. Everybody will support that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, as it is today, it was back then. Advertisement helps. So this sure. might be just a little bit of hyperbole here. I don't know what y'all think <laughs> It's a show on earth for the money. Yeah. You never see another one like it. It's grand, magic lantern, exhibition. You know, remember the day and the location. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be at Thank so and so Baptist Church, and the admission is 10 cents. Everybody come, tell your name. You know, really. a good show, and boy, they were ready to promote it and get the word out. Okay. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this show because. 
to me, these guys must have been real characters. I wish that I could have seen some of these guys back in the day. You know, we've seen the, the medicine show barkers and all that kind of thing. These guys must be close kin to them. Let's go to the next one. One thing that struck me is back in the day, most of these guys were called professor is an honorary title. Professor Jones is going to show us, you know, the uh, trip to the Holy Land. Of course, the guys can't get real excited or get a big head about that because I've also read, in fact, in those days, the piano player in body houses was called Professor yeah. also. <laughs> so, yeah. And as I mentioned, Many of these showmen traveled extensively to market their shows, and people found out that crippled veterans from the Civil War, you know, back then the treatment for most of the gunshot was amputation, so it's a lot of people disabled from the Civil War. Perfect occupation for them. They don't have to go around and maneuver a lot. They sit there and stick their slides in. If they got a good gift to get, they could be a showman, you know, so it's a great opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the business was good because unlike by opening the store and having to buy a lot of inventory, you get a, a basic projector and some slides, and you're in business for the uh, uh, Magic Lantern Show business. And there was an example I read of a black couple that traveled from Mississippi all the way to Georgia in an ox car doing Magic Lantern shows at churches. So you go over here to this church, you do one this night, and the congregation feeds you, and then you load everything up in the wagon, and you go across the other side of the canyon to another church. And they made it from Mississippi to Georgia doing that, and no telling how far back. And there was a really neat ad from a Georgia newspaper in 1884 where somebody was offering to trade a magic lantern outfit with a bunch of slides for a good, gentle buggy horse. And the come on for that is, that said, it would be an excellent way for a young man to start a lucrative career. So there you go, a ready career. Now, what happened to that one? It's a bad, well, it's a bad it's show. Bad. It's a bad show. That's all there is. So it's mainly in churches that they show. A lot of times it was church, but not always. And of course, you know, I've talked about the good showman. There it is, consequences of a bad show. Okay. All right. You get bad reviews in the local newspaper sometimes. Sorry. Wait, hold on. Like there was one newspaper had a four word review good slides, bad talk. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one where uh, the preacher said that somebody came in to give a uh, religious presentation said said a, a lot of pious words, but really it was more for entertainment than instruction. You know, so they give you a bad review sometimes. And uh, if you paid, especially if you paid an exorbitant fee like fifteen cents for your seat, and they gave you a bad show, back then people would egg you, or worse. So it could be uh, pretty bad. Well. Uh, <laughs> and of course, like anything else, if it was a stale topic, if you'd already had somebody come through here and do the normal church wounds of the life of Christ and do the Holy Land, the next guy that comes to town with that show, he's going to have a hard time getting an audience up. So I had to constantly modify, come up with new shows and new topics, something new and different. I, I like the fire oh. Yeah, I got that. Yes. That one. <laughs> You know, they really animated with these things. And uh, you could read that. One guy uh, was in a church and he decided he was going to really make a point. And he's talking about hell and, uh, and so forth and the judgment. And he set off firecrackers. Well, in that church, when he did that, people jumped over the pews. And I didn't include it in here, but they actually said there were several knife fights. Some cuttings in the church. <laughs> really just total pain. Oh, Lord. So you got to mm -hmm. be careful what you're doing. Uh, let's talk about locations there. All right. Anything with a big auditorium, the big room. So churches were the most popular, probably, but also uh, the courthouse, if there's a courtroom, schools or fraternal lodges, all of those were good locations, you know, that you could book a. Uh, a show in. 
Okay. So when we look at him, that's really, it was a great way of filling a need for entertainment before the days of mass media. And the successful show required a good projector, an interesting slide set with high quality slides, but most of all, a gifted showman to entertain the audience and make it a, a fun experience for everyone. So I really wish uh, in a way we could all go back and see the way one of these was done back in the day by a professor. I think it would be an interesting thing. Okay. <laughs> then if there's any questions, I'm all in. I have not found out the whole story. He just said it was yeah. used locally. And he thought the light source was acetylene. Beyond that, I didn't get much else out of it. So he's oh, had it for a while? He had it for a long while. Oh, a long time. Ago. And it came, in, it came in like a big trunk with lots and lots of slides. Well, yeah. So there were multiple slide shows that were included with it. Tell them why you couldn't bring it here tonight to, to use. Yeah, the reason I didn't bring it to actually demonstrate it, I thought it'd be easier to show a picture of it, you know, in the display case, <clears throat> was the fact that it's designed to use in a large room. When I was cleaning it up and lubricating things and cleaning the rust off of it, I tried to use some floodlights and things I had down in my shop and slide, show slides down the hallway in my home. I've got a hall that runs the length of the house. That wasn't big enough to focus it. I could I could never get it in focus on the far wall. It needed a greater distance than that. So it was made for a big room. Exactly. I mean, it's so like a school room or a big courtroom or something bigger than mine. Well, uh, the one that at the uh, in jail does that have it? Reflectors inside to man to intensify the light. Not okay. if there was any of that, um, it's not in there now. Yeah, it's basically a rectangular tin case for the light source, right? And then the slide holder and the long lens, and that's that's what we've got. So that that's added. Yeah, this to is more the, more basic. Uh, it's it's a fairly basic yeah. model. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it requires a pretty intense I'll light source to, to work well. Were the uh, slides that they used in this? Were they kind? Of, were they in, in, in any way standardized? You know what I mean? The, um, I think there were probably some canned presentations that were popular. But I mean, as far as the sizing and all that, uh, that they used. I think most of them were similar sizes from what I've seen. It's hard. They have to be the slide through the Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it was a kind of a standard slide. And would hope those slides or glass mounted in a nice wood holder, you know. So is it double panes to sandwich the image? <laughs> it's it's either painted or printed on there in the case of a photograph. Uh, it doesn't, they're not scratched? Most of them are. Most of them are in pretty good shape there. It's not etched or anything. Yeah. Okay, so there's a movie out. Uh, the man who created Christmas and uh, in that. There is a magic lantern. Uh, Dad brings a magic lantern, and what he does oh, is, right. slide, yeah. is he has a slide of somebody in a, 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 a gown or something. And then what he does is he brings another slide into it, and the slide goes across the top. Mm -hmm. and it looks like it's flying, you know, it's a little bit. So, once again, that's where the projectors that had two or three lenses. There's a lot of different things you could do, special effects when you had multiple lenses. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got a question? I need to see that again. But I encourage you sometime if you if you get a chance to look at the slides in the exhibit in the old jail museum, it's really neat. The the variation from something just a pretty basic thing to, to some of the real beautiful pictures of flowers or you know uh, pastoral scenes or you know uh, individuals, famous people, and so forth. Uh, pretty cool. So th th this thing looks like a chimney. Is it to, to let the heat go out? Yes, because you know if you had a acetylene projector lamp in there, that generates a lot of heat. So that's a chimney for it to go out. But you see what a long distance yes. this lens. Now this brass lens will extend probably that far. Oh, the the, the black thing doesn't go back. 
No. It's just the brass. It is it is tin, just like uh -huh. the body. Uh -huh. So it doesn't expand or contract. And of course, you've got a spring-loaded uh, device here that you slide that uh, image into and it holds the car. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, hot. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it was. Mm -hmm. Imagine. I'm sorry? It was all tin. That's why I think it got way too hot. Yeah, I'm sure it got really hot back in the day. Yeah. And uh, it was probably a hot job in the summertime doing one of these shows okay. if you were the professor. Yeah. I was just thinking we had a, well, we did get some cufflinks that we had a neighbor that was a policeman in Chicago. But now I'm just thinking we have this poker games. And it was signed by J. Edgar Hoover. We should do that. Sure. Do what? No. It, it was signed by Jacob Hoover. What? What was this book? Our our former neighbor. Okay, but are you are you talking about donating that to to the museum? Okay, but we like to have stuff that's relevant to Lumpkin County, oh, not God. not from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Partner died in wow. Chicago. Wow. Shades of. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a museum piece to me. Absolutely. All right. I don't want to keep anybody. Is there any other questions before we wrap up? It's very good, Brian. Oh, yeah. Oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give that to you before Valentine's Day. No problem. Thank you.